When did I realize that my dad was not like other dads? Wow, that's a great question. Um, probably when he left for the Emmy Awards when I was an infant, I mean, two, three, four, so not, not total infant, at an age that I remember, he picked up my twin sister, Candace and I, and he held us close. And he said, I love you girls, please bring me good luck. And actually Milton Berle, who lived two doors down, told me this story at a wedding just before he passed. And we actually tinkled down his tuxedo. <laughs> it's the truth. And when he went on the Emmys, he decided that that was his good luck because of course he won. He won five for the Sergeant Bilko show. That was the first time I realized when he came home and told me that story. And we were of course so embarrassed but that our father was very famous. At the time I became familiar with dad's work, well, it was all my life. He was always on television and we had this beautiful home with a lovely den. And as kids watch TV, which my parents allowed, we, we would watch him on commercials and TV shows. And, but everyone else's dad was on the commercials and TV shows. And I mean, Phil Morris, Mission Impossible was a big show on TV and his kids were in school with us. And, Jamie Lee Curtis was walking down the hall and it, it, you know, everyone was there. And so it, it really, again, it seemed normal to me. Rolling into the entertainment industry, if you will, it was like nothing, you know, it was just like, so. <laughs> uh, when you grow up in it and it's all you know and it's all that everyone around you is doing and it's all their parents are doing, I just felt like I was, you know, doing nothing out of the ordinary. So to launch on to the Happy Day set, I was nervous when I got there because the show had been on for seven years and I'd been watching it for seven years. And to see these stars, um, yes, by the time I landed on the set, I was shaking. And there's a great story in my book about Henry Winkler coming up behind me, opening night and holding me, literally holding me because I was shaking. So it's not entirely true <laughs> to say I wasn't nervous. I didn't know there was gonna be a live audience. That's what threw me. I thought I was just going to go out and perform but there were 200 people on Friday night when the curtain opened and um, of course there was dad and mom and all my sisters and um, the show began uh, for me for the next six years. But how did I get the role Jerry Paris, the director? I had to audition like 11 times and I went up against Heather Thomas and Heather Locklear, these two beautiful blonde bombshells and me. <laughs> I was like, I'm never going to get this job. I'd watch television, you know, in the print industry. Everyone looked like them. And I'd been to a frat party with Heather Locklear the night before at UCLA. We were 18, 19 years old, you know, and I thought, oh my gosh, I've seen her on TV. She looks cuter in the toga. <laughs> Little outfits we were wearing than I. Anyway, when I rode up the elevator at ABC and I auditioned against those two girls, I remembered my father's advice that I heard him give many people because I heard dad give advice all the times that I saw him. We were usually in crowds and he was advising people that would ask, how do you become an actor? You know, what advice do you have Sergeant Bilko, Phil Silvers for actors? And he would say, number one, know your lines. And number two, treat it as a business. That's all that it is. This is a job. And I loved that about him. It grounded me. And so I knew when I saw those 200 people, I knew my lines and I treated it as a business. I never let it go to my head. I never let it make me feel better than anyone else. And for that, I'm truly grateful. Phil Silvers plays Kathy Silvers' father. On Happy Days, Roscoe Piccolo plays Jenny Piccolo's dad. And uh, Babalu told me just last week that it came about because they were so in awe of my father that when he walked on the set, they literally got on bended knee, literally, physically. They were so taken aback by the fact that this legend was walking onto the set. And I, the week before, John Belushi had walked onto the set. And to me, that was like, dad always said, you're never a hero in your own home. And to me, he was just dad. But when John Belushi walked on the set, because Saturday Night Live was like the show, was the it show on TV, then I was going crazy. I'm like, John, I love you. But when dad walked on the set, it was different. Um, and it came about because of the love of Gary Marshall, Henry Winkler, Tom Bosley, Marion Ross, the entire cast of Happy Days loved him and wanted him on the show. And so he came on. Dad treated me very professionally on the set, which I appreciated. He didn't try to mix uh, 
business with family. So Henry Winkler gave me some great advice when I got on the set and he said, when those doors close, because stage doors are enormous, <laughs> it's not like a door that you walk through because the cameras have to roll through. So when the set doors closed, Henry said, you leave all of your problems behind. You are now in the theater and you are here to perform. And so I took that advice and I was, I was curious to see how dad would handle the week. And he handled it very professionally. My career following Happy Days has led into, uh, well, the title of my book, Happy Days, Healthy Living, from sitcom teen to the health food scene. So right here in this kitchen, my eldest, Lily, who was also an actress, came home from high school, a freshman in high school, and said, Mom, I'm going to be a vegan. And I'd never heard the word. This is seven years ago in 2007. And so I had to read up on the vegan diet. I weighed about 150. I had just had Patrick and Roxy, my two little ones. And I could not take the weight off. And I couldn't figure out how to take the weight off. And I was shopping in mainstream stores. And I didn't know anything about health. But in order to feed my eldest child, I had to learn, right? So she challenged me that weekend. We went to visit friends in Oregon and to be vegan for the weekend. And I was, and I found it to be really easy. Fast forward seven years later, I studied the vegan diet, the vegetarian diet to the raw vegan diet, and I am predominantly a raw vegan. Although I do eat what's called medicinal meat, the, the amino acids in red meat, my uh, doctor of Chinese medicine believes is important for my voice. And I do uh, love raw dairy. And so I am not truly vegan, but it is truly raw. And my company, Healthy Living, we are now in many natural stores. I have 13 products. My wonderful book, which teaches the path from an unhealthy diet to a healthy diet. And I just found out now that we have been picked up from my web show, The Healthy Living Show, to come back onto television as The Healthy Living Show. I think we have a lot to learn from our children. I had a lot to learn from my parents. And uh, when my dad said, he was asked a question in an interview, do you believe in religion? And he said, I believe in the brotherhood of man. And I say, I believe in the brotherhood of humankind. Um, my father's advice was magnificent and I took it. And my daughter's advice was beyond magnificent and I took it. She wasn't meaning to advise me. My father wasn't meaning to advise anyone. But I study the brotherhood of humankind, the sisterhood of humankind. I study humankind and in that study, for my own meditation, for my own health, I don't dye my hair, I'm 53. I'm ripped, that's a washboard stomach under there. <laughs> and I, I listened to her and I have a feeling that I will have a voice now for those who are struggling with healthy living, happy days and healthy living because I have both. I got the television Happy Days side and learning to be happy from my parents and my amazing family. And I got the healthy living side from my daughter. And all of the answers of health are in nature. And it is natural that our family is in our lives. And so in staying close to family and nature, everyone can enjoy happy days and healthy living.